Hey folks, and welcome to Truck King. We finally had the chance to drive the 2024 Ford Ranger recently, and we released three different videos on the truck, so make sure you go watch those here on the channel for all of our thoughts. Now, while I was at the event where Ford launched the Ranger, I had the chance to interview the Ford Ranger chief engineer, and I was gonna release that interview sort of in the main review as little sections, but I decided it was better to leave it uncut, unedited, and just put the whole thing out there there. So right now, let's talk all about the brand new Ford Ranger with its chief engineer. So Juan, thanks so much for having me out here to drive the new Ranger. I appreciate it. Um, I think the first question is just, you know, what's new? And I give the short answer, which is everything, but you can give a more detailed answer on what's new with this uh, generation of Ranger. All right, excellent. Well, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very, very proud of, of the new uh, Ranger. It is truly all new. I, I get tired of saying new, new, new. Mm -hmm. All the exterior skin is new. The box is new. The frame, we widened the frame plus two inches on track width, mm -hmm. plus two inches on wheelbase. We took the rear dampers, we packaged, we packaged them outboard. Mm -hmm. That gave us a better tuning envelope. The ride and handling, I mean, the vehicle feels planted. That jittery, you know, small truck, Unladen bed. Usually, you get a very, the rear end wants to almost like come out. Yeah, from chatter under a you. little bit. Yeah. Chatter is a little. Uh, this, I mean, again, we we tamped it down quite a bit, but again, the tuning envelope. So it's good when it's loaded. Mm -hmm. It's good when it's unloaded. But also it gives you confidence driving. Like, I mean, we've been. It's dry down here, but up in the mountains, there was a lot of snow, and and I mean, so far it's been a pretty consistent, you know, sort of feedback that the vehicle is. Very responsive, very precise. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not a, a, a boat on an ocean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a it's a good balance of uh, ride and handling. The ride handling is dramatically improved. Mm -hmm. So starting with the structure, the frame is all new. Yeah. Um, in, a, uh, in, a, in growing the frame, like I said, we put those dampers outboard of the frame, gave mm -hmm. us better tuning, mm -hmm. fine handling. Up front, in growing that frame, we could package larger engines. Got it. So now we still start with the 2.3 liter EcoBoost 4. Yeah, which is now, one of the few carryover things, right? Yes, exactly. In fact, yeah, one of the, maybe one, one or two things. Yeah, the transmission, still the class exclusive 10 speed automatic, mm -hmm. and that 2.3 liter, which is still pretty good at 270 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque, yeah. that one is also carryover. And then as a step up engine, now, because 76% uh, of customers told us that, uh, Ranger customers, told us that performance was important to them compared to just 60% for normal mid-size pickup customers in the segment. Okay. And uh, a top five reason for customers who considered but rejected a Ranger in the past, performance was one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. So we saw the pattern, performance, performance, performance. We said we got to do something on performance. It can't just be the same 2.3 liter. Got it. So we gave him now a 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6, same 2.7 liter that's in the F-150 and in our, our sister vehicle in Michigan assembly plant, the Bronco, mm -hmm. same exact 2.7 liter engine. Now we also operate it here with 315 pound feet of uh, horsepower, excuse me, mm -hmm. and 400 pound feet of torque. Nice. So in this package, you know, again, a mid-size pickup of this size, with that kind of power, it's a it's a fun vehicle to get that kind of available on XLT and Lariat four by fours. Nice. So, uh, and then new for 2024 now, mm -hmm. North America finally has Ranger Raptor, mm -hmm. and the Ranger Raptor gets a three liter EcoBoost V6 with 405 horsepower, uh, 430 pound feet of torque. That's crazy. And it is insane. <laughs> we have two four x four systems: a part time four x four system on the base Rangers, and a full time four x four system on the Raptor. Mm -hmm. uh, and all that gives us 7,500 pounds of max towing, mm -hmm. trail towing, and 1,805 pounds of max payload on the mm -hmm. 2.3 liter two wheel drive. So those numbers are pretty pretty good numbers they to be are, proud yeah. of. And in addition to that capability, then what we did on the inside where customers spend all, most of the time if they're not out back working on the working end of the truck, we gave an all new interior. The old interior was long in the tooth when we first launched it, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But this all new interior has all the cool technology, all the cool materials, all the cool spaces where you can put stuff away. It's got over the air updates. We have a lot of PowerPoint connections. I mean, it's about that customer experience. I mean, we spend a lot of time on not just checking boxes to add stuff. Mm -hmm. So you feel like, okay, I'm getting 30 things versus you're getting 20, but actually giving customers a good experience of ownership, right? With your towing, Pro Trail Backup Assist, it came down from the Super Duty to the F-150 to the Ranger. Yeah. Nobody has that. And I'm proud to say that the competition does not have that, mm -hmm. and what they have pales in comparison. Totally. If you've never towed and you tried 
pro trailer backup assist, anybody could back up a trailer, including a sh little short trailer, mm -hmm. which tends to be a little bit more difficult. For sure. You could do it easily. Uh, so game-changing technology. But in, in addition to that, I mean, over-the-air updates on like 30 plus modules. Cool. Uh, you know, it's connected vehicles. So, mm -hmm. you know, you got mode in the but Sync 4. We have a, a 10 inch and 12 inch uh, portrait size center screen. Yeah. We're all digital inside. We have an eight inch and 12.4 inch instrument cluster. I mean, again- Even that's such a step forward, like having a 10 inch screen as the base screen yes. is wild, right? Yeah. It's not, we're not far removed from the eight inch screen being the big one, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. And and again, all digital screens, instrument cluster and center screen, but, but to your point, it's a 10 inch portrait. I mean, mm -hmm. it, look, uh, I a couple of years ago I had an Explorer ST and the 10 inch was the high end. Yeah, and it was exactly two years ago. Yeah. so this is entry level now. So I like the fact that technology is working its way down to the masses. Yeah. Um. So again, we wanted to give the customer just more a a, a better, uh, uh, ex, you know, better interior because you, you live sure. in the interior. Absolutely. It has to be a good interior. So all new interior, all new seats. Um. Uh, as you can see, uh, door trim panels have storage in them. Yeah, well, a lot I, of I like the use of the different materials. Again, I feel like that's becoming common in trucks, but just the different things to sort of break it up visually gives it that kind of tough look too, that it's sort of knurled in there. Yeah. And, and I like that because it doesn't necessarily have to be sort of expensive to look good, you know? And that's I think exactly that's right. another idea that's coming into trucks and you guys are proving that here, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, there was a comment that was made. Now, I won't I won't say the bad word, mm -hmm. but <laughs> the, a competitor's vehicle, they, they made the comment that it's like five different kinds of poop plastic. <laughs> and, I, and, and, and and we have the vehicle here with us. Yeah, so yeah. so you, it's one of the ones that you can drive. So I don't want to say anything about the competition. But anyway, <laughs> uh, our interior, we spend a lot of time. Again, you yeah. can still design affordable mm -hmm. and make it look good. Exactly. You know, yeah. and, be, and again, have clean ability because it's a truck, it's going to get dirty. You got to be able to clean the, the, the fabrics. Sure. If, you, if, they, if, if they get soiled easily and you can't clean them, that's bad. Uh, we have, look at this vinyl floors. Yeah. Uh, you, can, you can spray white down and it's like new again. Yeah. So again, it's a pickup truck. It's uh, the, the traditional range of customer actually goes off road. You know, we have connected vehicle data, so we actually know how often people put their vehicles into four by four, etc. So, and you let the data drive, like, okay, is this a, an authentic or a poser? Are yeah. people really doing this or not? Yeah. Uh, I, I work closely with the Bronco team. I'm okay. also the Icon segment chief, so I've got Mustang, Bronco, and Ranger, and and a Bronco compared to its competitor. People go more off-roading than the alternative. Interesting. And so, That's super interesting so, that you so, guys can see that yes, back, back yes. at age so, so we care that Ford customers tend to be more like real outdoors people. Yeah. Real people who tow. Real people who work in their vehicles. So like on the pickup bed, we have 400 watts of in-bed power. Mm -hmm. The tailgate now has like a work surface with clamp pockets. Uh, we got the new box side steps. Mm -hmm. uh, again, the working into the truck is more usable. I'll tell you right now, just for me, yeah. widening out the wheel wells yeah. is a big deal. Getting over 48 inches, that's a big deal. Everyone always goes to the sheet of plywood. Yeah. For me, it's loading ATV snowmobiles. And having that paid. extra width, <laughs> yeah, it'll still be tight, but having that width makes a big difference. So yeah. I was happy to see that too. I see, I see. I was thinking of just the plywood. <laughs> the, mm. the full that's like the classic one, right? Wall. But you're right. I mean, if, if, if you're towing a toy, which yeah. you got yeah. many, uh, it, it makes perfect sense. Otherwise, you, you got to tow. Yeah. And it's okay. You can tow if you want to. Yeah. Absolutely. But uh, on the rear end, obviously we have a full flat uh, rear seat. Yeah. Uh, before it used to, it, it would fold. You know, the seat back would come down, but yeah, at an not angle. truly flat. And so customers have dogs, and they would say like, "My dog's like like climbing up a, a hill." <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, it just yeah. looked kind of weird. And so, and if you had a cooler or something in the outback, like we have a 120, uh, you know, power uh, connection up front, mm -hmm. 120 uh, outback. But if if you plug in your cooler inside. And you gotta have it like what? Uh, if you can't fold flat, you can't put it on top. Yeah, for you, sure. You know, stuff's gonna be at an angle. Slide to the back. Yeah, and or then whatever. if you put on the seats, and what? You're gonna put like towels down because you know you're not gonna dirty your seats. So yeah, yeah. again, spend a lot of time just thinking about the interior. We have 100% cool. front acoustic windshield. Nice. Hopefully, you notice that the vehicle is very quiet. Mm. I told you know you and your peers drive with the radio off and just listen. Mm. The vehicle it, it's like a vault. So again, a lot of time on. Uh, ride and handling, NVH, because bad NVH <laughs> is not ideal. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Man. Especially after the life of a product, right? You get a vehicle today, it's going to last you, I mean, north to 10 years. Sure. You, you know, vehicle prices have gone up. Yeah. Affordability is a challenge. So sure. I think most people are going to be holding on to their vehicles a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. So. 
this that's, makes it worthwhile. Yeah, that's a lot, man. And it is exciting that it wasn't just a reskin, that you guys really rethought the entire truck. And, and that's the next question I, I want to ask you about is, when the 2019 came over, it was already a worldwide product. I'm assuming North America didn't get very much input in that besides the powertrain. So with this truck, it's still a worldwide product, but it has to sell well here in the States and in Canada and in Mexico. How did you guys sort of tackle that? Was it a, a different challenge working on this one because it's a worldwide product? And how did it all kind of come together? Uh, you know, I think it was a different challenge, but a better challenge, I'll say. Uh, previously, as you said, the product was already on sale. Versus the, the Ranger is the F-150 of the world. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we assemble it in five assembly plants, wow. two in Thailand, one in South Africa, one in Argentina, and then one in Michigan assembly plant cool. here in the U.S. Okay. So five assembly plants, so we sell plenty. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, back in 2019, it was already on sale versus the world. We federalized it, bought it to the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, so we essentially took what was already out there. It was a bit more of a rounded kind of a, sure. it was a modern look at the time. Uh, um, but in redesigning this all new one from the base up and making and doing it all at the same time as we do all the global markets, mm -hmm. uh, we had a chance to really look at, at, at and, and take in, you know, where where all the pickup trucks because like the ASEAN market is a pretty heavy pickup truck market. Sure. Developing countries, uh, you know, this is this is a working. This is the interior is like a sedan. Yeah. And out back is your working end of the truck. For right? sure. So it's like, you know, you get two for the price of one. And uh, so we managed to to bake in a lot of the the customer wants, uh, uh, I mean, which are very different in some regards. Yeah, I'm sure or Like, you tricky. know, European customers versus ASEAN, customers versus, you know, Australian and New Zealanders, South Africa, you know, uh, all of Africa and then North America. Yeah. Uh, so what we were able to do was, uh, you know, North America, we are the kings of trucks. Of course. So in that regard, you know, the Big Brother Super Duty, Big Brother F-150, they actually set the standard. Yeah. Right? I mean, uh, what they do, others copy. And uh, we own four, you know, four trucks. It's all about trucks. I right? build ports up. And so I think from a styling standpoint, North America influenced it the most. And we mm. do a lot of research, of course. Sure. So we had different versions, you know, different uh, rendering uh, you know, different influences that, you know, you usually have a design competition mm -hmm. and everybody gets to kind of get, you know, be influenced by like a use case or like a target customer or, you know, or both. And then they come up with something with like a rendering. And then we literally just, you know, we start with many options globally. Everybody gets to throw in like, I think it should look like this. Sure. And then you kind of keep on whittling it down. Mm, interesting. And so North America actually went out. As you can see, the face is, it's very familiar in sure. the showroom with Maverick. with that For sure. The C-clamp sort of with exactly. the grill bar pushing you got, into that's it. That's exactly right. Yeah. And so, uh, and, and the tail lamps as well. I mean, yeah. so, so we definitely took a lot from North America from the showroom, but then in terms of, uh, of the platform capability, you know, the, 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 the platform, when, and it's a, it's a new platform. So when you engineer it, it's got, it's got a, some, a certain bandwidth of uh, capability. Sure. And, and, and that, that capability is going to ultimately influence, you know, what you can package up front, uh, depending on that mass that's packaged up front, uh, uh, the, the motor response of the of the frame, for example, is designed to work with uh, with that mass up front, mm -hmm. with the length of the drive line, and the powertrain bending that you're going to get mm -hmm. when you put that engine, that transmission, that transfer case, that rear axle. When you put them all together, you're going to get a certain amount of powertrain bending. All that all. All that information comes together, and ideally it has to work within an envelope. And that envelope, like you said, outside of North America, it's all diesel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raptor globally is all the same three liter gasoline, yeah. EcoBoost V6, but in okay. North America, we're all gasoline. Okay. So we were unique in that regard yeah. with our 2.3 liter EcoBoost 4 and yeah. our 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Raptor was gonna be global and it's same Raptor for everybody, but we influenced it obviously, you know, with our engines and then with, you know, with, with, with different engines, you have to, the you know, different emission requirements, et cetera. And, and the calibrations are gonna follow, you know, whatever fuel you have. Sure. Um, Sure, I will tell you it's disappointing you didn't bring a diesel. I understand why. I know it's kind of going out of uh, out of style in North America big time, but it that is. would have been sweet to have that little diesel. <laughs> you know, and and look, uh, uh, I think we had three diesels available rest of the world, mm -hmm. a single and a bi-turbo Panther. I forget what, what the, the public name is, but we yeah, call yeah. it Panther, and a Lion V6, which is like the higher output version. Mm -hmm. And 
a, a dual turbo Panther, I mean, that's a pretty badass power pack. Yeah, nice. Meaning, it puts out a heck of a lot of torque. Uh, uh, it's a very efficient engine. You know, that's the benefit of diesels. Right? Sure. Very efficient. Of course. Uh, so, uh, from a stoichiometric standpoint, they run efficiently, uh, but but also in terms of the power that they put out for their mass, mm -hmm. for their weight. So, it, it uh, uh, I'm a fan of diesel, but uh, North American customers are just... Yeah, you know, I totally get that. So, actually, along that same vein, then, too, uh, are there different bed and cab configurations for the rest of the world? And then can you just speak to why, again, in North America, we're crew cab short bed only now? Got it, got it. Yeah, we do have different bed lengths for the rest of the world. Okay. And we also have the super cab available in the rest of the world. Okay, yeah. Different markets, obviously, different customers buy different things. Yeah. North American customers tend to be more mature. They tend to have a little bit more income level yeah. as well. Yeah. Most of the data told us that consistently... You guys are buying Super Crew with a five foot bed. Yeah. So we could either design two configurations or three, and then whatever technology we're going to put in the engineering to engineer those, to develop, to validate them, to tool them up, mm -hmm. and then get into production. Imagine having to split that three ways. You, you, what you can give the customer then is less. Sure. When you do when you do this approach, okay, okay, this is what they're buying. So let's put everything into this. Now now you you, you give the customer a lot more. So Competitively, we're proud that you can put this up against anyone in our segment. Yeah. And what we offer, trounce is what they have. So you get a lot for your money. Uh, uh, some of our competitors are way overpriced. We think that this is a good value. Uh, uh, I mean, th this XL STX, this interior is amazing for an entry level truck. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. It gives you everything. Mm -hmm. So. Again, with an eye towards affordability, because affordability is a problem these days. Absolutely. And Ford believes in selling to the masses. Um, this is a way of, of us being able to, again, give you, maximize what we give you, mm -hmm. and really honestly address what, what you want, which is super crew and five foot bed. Sure. So actually, affordability, that's, that's a great point too. The other thing I've heard, um, and I know it came up on F-152, was, was simplification of, of the lineup. Complexity, of, absolutely. Of exactly, complexity, which should also help you build trucks too, right? Yeah. The less complexity you have, the more consistency that out, that, that operator is building, the better quality we're going to have. Got it. We have quality, you know, you build a vehicle, and then you do quality, multiple quality audits, and then everything's good, sure. nothing got out to the customer, and then you ship. So we have controls to make sure if there's an error, we can catch the error state. Mm -hmm. But... That's called hidden factory. That's called waste. If somebody's got to go and rework that or that or that or that, and and, and statistically speaking, some of that is going to get out. Mm -hmm. And so better quality comes from less complexity. So it, okay. it's actually, it, it's a benefit. Consistency of production, if an operator is doing, and I know it might sound terrible, like, well, they're going to do the same thing for like 12 hours a day. Uh, some jobs are like that. They, sure. They, we, we pay them very well and yeah, they yeah. earn it. <laughs> um, uh, they deserve it. You know, they, they deserve every dime that they make because it's, it's a tough job. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, look, if I, I've, I've done line jobs for a couple of days and my God, you're back. You're back. Again, I mean, obviously, oh, yeah. you know, it's real work. It's real work, absolutely. So God bless them, but um, but definitely, uh, consistency of operation will translate into quality, and also from an engineering standpoint, less less combinations uh, usually usually means uh, that the validation is going to be uh, better because our prototype fleet and all the testing that we do, um, the more permutations that you have. Then, yeah, the more you know, testing too, right? It, 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 that's exactly, the more testing. And in terms of all the possible combinations, yeah. no one ever builds every single combination to yeah. test. Yeah, yeah. And so then there's, you know, the validation from a probability standpoint is also going to be better that you can have a better quality product, better engineered and better assembled without less complexity. Hmm, that's very interesting. Well, Juan, I think that's it, man. I'm excited to go drive. Uh, so thanks for all the Dude, info, thank man. Thank you, man. Thanks for coming. Great Absolutely. to meet you in person, yeah. actually. Uh, I, I've been seeing you on YouTube for a long time, so it's kind of cool to actually press the flesh. <laughs> right on. I'm a bit of a fanboy, so do keep it up. You got a great channel. Appreciate and it, And that's why you got a ton of, uh, of, of eyeballs watching you. So keep it up, man. Yeah, well, let's go drive some trucks. All right, excellent. Let's do it. Thanks. Well, folks, we have come to the end of this one. Now, I really hope you enjoyed our conversation. And of course, I want to hear your thoughts on everything you heard. So please go in the comments. Let me know what you thought of the interview and of the new Ford Ranger. As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See ya.